Hello friends, let's talk about states and the most common problems you may encounter. It's one of the most important parts of React and after React hooks, it became really easy to handle states. We are just creating a state variable, its set function and the initial state inside your state hook. And whenever we want to update the state, we just use this set function and change the current state. It looks pretty easy, but there are some important points that we need to know. So let's say I have an h1 tag here and it shows this number. And here, let's create a button and whenever we click on this button, it's gonna fire this function and the number will be increased. Let's check the app on the right side. I'm clicking and as you can see, it works as we expected. But what if I add here another button? Again, it's gonna increase the number, but this time asynchronously. I will say increase async. Of course, I'm not gonna create a real async function, but we can use a timeout function and we will increase this number after 2 seconds. So when I click, it's gonna wait 2 seconds, then update the state. Let's try. Now here, and after a while, it's 2. It looks okay, but what if I click on this async button, and right after that, click on this first button a couple of times without waiting 2 seconds. Let's see what's gonna happen. I'm clicking right after that here and as you can see it turned back to 3. So what's happening here? When we click on this button, our number was 2. Let me take back again. Okay, so when I click, this number is always remembered. That because here, when we update the state in this way, we still refer to the old value. So basically this number is our reference. To solve this problem, only thing we should do is to use functional update approach. So I will say set number again, but this time, instead of a value, I'm gonna pass a function. And the argument of this function will be the latest number we have. Let's say previous number or the current number, whatever you say, but these two are the most common namings. So you can choose one of them, previous or current. And I'm gonna take this number and increase here like that. Basically, we are not recreating our number. We are just updating the current value in the memory. Let's see right now. Increase, async, increase again a couple of times. And as you can see, it works as we expected. So when you update your state, it's better to use function version instead of updating it directly like that. Okay. The second common use state problem is the initialization. When you initialize your state, what you are writing in use state is really important. Let me show you what I mean. I'm creating a user state and at the beginning we don't have any user. It's gonna be empty. But let's say we are gonna fetch a user data later and update this user. And after updating, I'm expecting a user like username email and images array which includes the profile picture and the cover picture. Something like that. But remember, we don't have them yet. So if I come here and say username is user.name, let's save and as you can see, there is a white screen here. And it's a really common problem. I saw this many times in Lamadev social media groups. People are having trouble with this blank page issue all the time. By the way, group links will be in the description below if you want to join and ask your questions. Anyway, the problem is our user variable is undefined. We didn't provide any type here. But in the HTML section, we are trying to get an object property which we don't have yet. To solve this problem, we have many options. The first one you can write here a condition and say if there is a user, show me this span. In this case, only after updating the user we will be able to see its name. And the second solution is writing here a question mark. Basically, it's a shortcut of verifying an object or array. I mean, it's the same thing with writing here. If there is a user, show me user.name. Let's take it back. And the last solution is to initialize your state with the expected type. So if it's gonna be a string, just write here an empty string. If it's an array, write an empty array. 
and in our case, it's going to be an object. Right now, there is no blank page anymore. But sometimes it's not enough to write only an empty object here. For example, if I write one more span and say profile picture is user.pictures and I will take the first picture in this array. So if you look at the app again, you will see that we have exactly the same problem. That because this time we don't have such an array. To prevent this, you can write here what properties you exactly need, like username, string, email, string, and images array. In this case, we won't have any problem. I highly recommend you to write them like that because most probably you are gonna forget writing a condition somewhere in the HTML. So don't forget writing your types. Okay, right now I'm gonna change the initial state and I will give a name, email, and images. So what I want to do is to update only name of this user. To do that, I'm gonna create an input which takes a username and a button to update our user. And I will create another state that holds an empty string. So whenever I write here anything, it's gonna update this input state. To do that, I will create an onChange event and update the input like that. Basically, the target of the event is this input and value is the string that we write here. Okay, we have a name right now, but how I'm gonna update this user? Remember, I will change only this username. All other properties will be the same. Let's write here a click event and call a function. Change user. Let's create this function. We already know that we shouldn't do this by writing user.name equals input or set user user.name equals input. It's not gonna work because we are not returning a user here. Inside of the set method should be an user object. It's gonna assign this value to user state directly. What I mean by that? I will say console log and user. I will change here and click. As you can see, it returns directly this string. And the user is not an object anymore. It removed name, email, and image. You might think to write here an updating function and write it like that. But again, we are not returning any object. It's gonna return only this value. Let's see. As you can see, it's still the same. So what we should do is to update this name property while returning the user object. You are gonna understand what I mean better right now. I will say return an object and this object will include everything in the current state. Name John, email john at gmail.com and images. Everything will be the same. But I will update only name here and it will be input. And right now, when I click, it will update only username. If you don't know using this spread operator, let me explain quickly. Let's say we have an object which includes name, surname, and age. If I define another object, and it will take every properties of this object, and as you can see, it's exactly the same. I will say take everything, but additionally add here a city. And right now it has name, surname, age, and city. And also I can change any property here. As we did in the example, let's say take everything but change only username. Okay, I think you understood how it works. And this usage is really useful, especially when you have a form and you have many inputs inside. Let me create one. Actually, I will just copy and paste. And as you can see, I have eight inputs. And the biggest mistake you can do is to create here use state hooks for each input. For name, for surname, for every single one. It consumes a lot of time and it reduces the code readability. So what you should do is to create here a single use state, which includes every properties, and change their values using only one function. So I will grab my inputs 
and create a change event on change handle change let's create this function i will do exactly the same thing i will use the functional update take every properties from the previous state and change a specific property according to event target for example if i change here it's gonna update only name but how it's gonna know which inputs i mean for name it will write here name event target and value for surname event target and value basically we are gonna need their names it's really easy to handle that i will choose again all these inputs and i will give them some specific names it's gonna be name surname and others but make sure that these names are exactly the same names in the state object right now i can use those names like that don't forget these parentheses it's a property name so I will write console log and check my state. And now doesn't matter which inputs I am writing in, it directly updates my state. It's really useful when you want to update multiple states. But should we use useStateHook everywhere that we need a state or states? The answer is no. Sometimes using a useReducer hook is much better than using a useState. Of course, there is no rule that you should use useReducer instead of useState, or it's not a mistake if you still use it, but in some specific situations, useReducer is more advantageous. For example, if you have a more complex object that has different properties like arrays, nested objects, or other things here, it's better to use useReducer, because when you update different properties, it's gonna be really messy here. Because all elements are not strings or numbers, like the previous example, so we cannot update them in one function. We have tags, we should separate each tag and push inside this array, or choose different categories, increase or decrease this number, and there is a nested image here. Actually, this example is okay, but can you imagine you have maybe 10, maybe more properties here, and you will have to use spread operator all the time, and probably you will make a lot of mistakes. So creating a use reducer and using different actions for each changes might be more useful here. Of course, I'm not gonna deep dive into use reducer in this tutorial, but if you want to see in the future, just let me know in the comments. And the last common mistake is to derive states incorrectly. Let me explain. We have product state, which includes ID, title, and quantity. And we are listing all these products using a map here, its title, and there is a quantity, and it includes its number and two buttons here that we can increase or decrease this number. As you can see, we are passing product ID, and in the function, we map through all products and find the related product and increase its number. You already know how we do this. Let's see. It works perfectly. And here we have a select button. When we click on this button, it fires this select function. And basically it takes the product ID and finds the product that we want according to this ID. And after finding, it sets a new selected product and we show this product here. Everything looks nice, we can select any product here, but the problem is happening when we try to update product quantity. As you can see, we increase this number, but the selected product is still the same. That because the product inside this selected state and the product inside this array are not the same. We just created here a new product. We are not exactly choosing it from this array. So how we can solve this problem? Basically, instead of storing here a new product, I can store only its ID. So when I select any product, I'm just gonna update selected ID. Now I can write here selected product, and again, we will find the product using its ID. Let's try. 
I'll select this product and when I increase this number, it increases here also. And it's really important guys, especially if you are not working with any state management tool, you will encounter this issue all the time. So don't forget, if one state affects another one, just store its ID instead of creating a new object inside. Okay. I can give more examples, but those are the most common problems that you will most probably have in the future. But right now, you know how to handle them. I hope you liked it. If you want to learn any other React hooks like use effect, use memo, use callback, or any others, just let me know in the comments. And if you learned something new today, please like the video. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.